Yes, my name, John Leeson. <laughs> and I played what is billed as first soldier. There were two soldiers, in fact. And I was very surprised that the other soldier that they chose was a great mate of mine when I was at drama school, when I was at Rado, years, years before. So that was nice, that was good. I got cast in Dad's army through, I suppose, my agent at the time. Um, they were uh, interviewing at the BBC for characters to, to play, uh, sort of occasional characters in, in Doc, not Doc, I'm going to say Doctor Who now, and I don't mean that, <laughs> in Dad's army. Um, and it just happened that they, they cast me, which was lovely. But I must tell you, about um, a fortnight before the date of shooting the scene, I was called in by the BBC, uh, their makeup, hair and makeup department. And because I was playing a soldier, they wanted to give me a, a number one haircut, which is a real scalping, absolutely. You know, hardly any hair left. And uh, this was rather worrying because I'd been married for only a short time by that time. And I think my wife Judy wanted me to have more hair on my head that she could get hold of. But that's, that's another matter entirely. We'll, we'll overlook that. But then, would you believe, the next week I'm called in by the costume department to give me my uniform and everything else. Except that they also gave me a balaclava helmet to wear and underneath my tin hat and all you could see was the little round of my face not a single hair in sight anyway <laughs> yes my wife was furious <laughs> the filming was done i believe if memory serves me right, it was done in the studio. Um, I'm not absolutely certain because it were all night scenes, wasn't it, um, in Sons of the Sea. They were all cast adrift on the waters. And yes, there was all this carousing going on in a local pub or something, singing going along. And of course it was in French. But I, I got the plot line of the whole piece. It's wonderful, they're, they're French Canadians making such a, a good sport of things over there. They shot down their 50th German plane, I think, so there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I was around um, for, I should think, quite a while because you never know how scenes are going to run even though there's a schedule I mean unexpected things can happen so I must have been there for quite some time but don't forget you're looking at this and me today when I was doing that was something like 50 years ago so memory is not uh, my best forte my best suit this morning Well, it was simply, the scene itself was simply a cutaway. It was a cutaway after that uh, Mannering and the, and the crew uh, had tried to get nearer to the shore uh, because they were going to shout ahoy for help or something like that uh, all together. And then the singing turned out to be French, of course which frightened everybody considerably in, in the little boat. They thought they'd drifted right across the channel. Uh, and so uh, uh, I think it was uh, John LeMessurier's character said, do, do, do you think it's wise, Captain Mannering, to, uh, to be shouting because we, we might get shot at ourselves? 
uh, the Germans wouldn't like it. They, of course, were occupying France at the time. Um, and then we, there's this cutaway, because all this singing is in French. And then me and my mate, the other soldier, are standing there a bit nearer to the sound and quite enjoying the, the jollities going on in the pub over there. And uh, then I say, well, you, you can't blame these uh, French-Canadian pilots. They've got something to celebrate. They shot down a, uh, the 50th German plane, so no wonder they're, they're in a happy mood and singing away. Uh, and that was it, really. And then I think what Mannering and company had done, they'd left all their their guns and equipment, and they, they were armed, of course, um, and so they had to go back and, uh, and, and pick them all up. <laughs> I, I forget how it ended, but uh, it is available, I believe, to watch uh, somewhere on your screens, <laughs> if you can find it. <laughs>、well, of course, in rehearsal, You're in there with everybody, so you've got to meet everybody.、Uh, you've got to meet the platoon, because this, the, the wonderful thing about how long、um, Dad's Army has lasted was that it was a serious gang show. It really was. People were in in real difficulties. They weren't. It wasn't a comedy like we see it today. It was sort of jokes all over the place for no particular reason other than getting a laugh.、Um, they, they, it was a wartime situation, and everything was was very much more sort of real. There, there, there were reasons behind the the comedy.、Um, and when、uh, I remember, that there was another story, wasn't there? When when、uh, Mannering was has had encountered this German sailor, German, and he was making remarks about Hitler, I think. And、uh, yes, that's right. And the the sailor said, "Well, I'm going to put you in my book. I'm going to put you in my book."、Uh, and then Private Pike over there. Says you know Hitler's a you know fool or this that and the other is I put you in my book as well. What is your name? Don't tell him, Pike. You know, it's, a, it's a wonderful piece of, of lack of thought on the part of Captain Mannering, and you realise that originally the idea for the leader of the platoon was. To have John the Measurer's character as the lead, and、um, Captain Mannering to be in a, in a sort of subordinate position, but as Captain Mannering had so much energy and, and it, it was a it was a beautiful switch. It actually worked extremely well because it had a sort of impulse behind it that the sort of rather airy fairy、um, John the Measurer's character. You know, was, Didn't have that sort of energy behind him, and so、uh, Mannering carried the piece, which was wonderful. Have I got a favourite character? I think the answer has to be no, because it was such a fine blend of different characters. All with their own、uh, energy levels and their, their own、uh, the worlds they'd come from,、uh, a fairly ill-assorted mix of people, but they all gelled together because the common、uh, purpose behind it was, you know, to be to be serving the country, you know, and、um, no. No, I can't say I had any particular favourite. They were all tremendous at what they did, and were and so predictable for audiences. I mean, some some lines coming up that、uh, you knew a little Private Godfrey was going to say something, uh, uh, and and he did, you know, before you got there.
<laughs> uh, it was tremendous, tremendous stuff. When you are working with a producer and a writer, or co-writers indeed, who have worked out so very finely the situations within the comedy, what works, uh, it's real craftsmanship. Uh, two very nice blokes, I must say, uh, I remember from my time on there, but you look back now and you think that was really well made stuff. It stood up perfectly in terms of its rationality. And there was danger in it as well, which was which was good. Um, yes. And as a director, of course. David Croft was, was extremely good. He knew exactly what he wanted and the cast were only too happy to give him exactly what he wanted. So it was a happy ship, a more happy show, I should say. <laughs> Very welcome. Very nice indeed. Uh, don't get up, by the way. Um, I haven't, uh, there may be something else we'll see.